Hey everyone, welcome back to Ton Does Linux. Today we're diving into something that always gets the Linux community fired up. Desktop environments. That's right, we're ranking the major Linux desktop environments of 2025 in a no-holds-barred tier list. Whether you're a Linux veteran who remembers when GNOME 2 was cutting edge, store that in your memory banks, folks, or you're a newcomer wondering why there are so many darn options, this video will break down what's worth your time and what might leave you reaching for that Windows installer again. Just kidding, mostly. Before we jump in, let me explain how this tier list works. As tier, the cream of the crop, exceptional in almost every way. A tier, excellent options with minor drawbacks. B tier, solid choices that get the job done well. C tier, average options with significant limitations. D tier, below average only for specific use cases. F tier, avoid unless you enjoy digital pain and suffering. Remember, this is based on my experience and research in 2025, and your mileage may vary. Your favorite DE might be my digital nightmare, and that's the beauty of Linux. We can all customize our own personal computing hell exactly how we like it. Let's get started! KDE Plasma. Coming in at the absolute top of our list is KDE Plasma. If desktop environments were superheroes, Plasma would be wearing the cape and saving the day while the others are still figuring out how to put on their tights. What makes Plasma so special? In one word, balance. It manages to be incredibly feature rich without becoming a resource hog. The days of KDE being synonymous with laggy are long gone, folks. Let's talk strengths. Customization that would make even the pickiest users happy. Surprisingly good performance across different hardware. A modern, attractive default appearance that doesn't scream, I'm using Linux to everyone in the coffee shop. Excellent application integration. Active development that keeps improving without breaking everything. Of course, it's not perfect. The settings menu has more options than a restaurant with a 20 page menu. New users might feel overwhelmed by all the choices. Occasionally, cutting edge features can introduce stability issues. But here's the bottom line. KDE Plasma has matured into the most versatile, powerful desktop environment in the Linux ecosystem. It's like that Swiss Army knife that somehow also makes espresso and gives good life advice. If you want a desktop that can be anything from a minimal work environment to a flashy powerhouse, Plasma is your best bet in 2025. GNOME GNOME has come a long way, and in 2025, it's firmly in the A tier. It's like that friend who's really into minimalism and keeps trying to get you to throw away half your stuff. Annoying sometimes, but often right. GNOME's strengths are clear. Clean, consistent design that feels modern. Excellent touchscreen support. Seriously, try it on a convertible laptop. Strong accessibility features. Regular, predictable updates. Corporate backing that ensures it's not going anywhere. The weaknesses are just as well known. Out of the box, customization options are about as plentiful as trees in the desert. It's hungrier for resources than some alternatives. You'll be installing extensions faster than a kid unwrapping presents to get basic functionality. GNOME has found its identity as the desktop that says, we know better than you what you want. And surprisingly, they're often right. If you can embrace its workflow instead of fighting it, GNOME rewards you with a cohesive, polished experience. Cosmic. System 76's Cosmic Desktop has rocketed into the A tier, which is impressive for a relatively new player. It's like that new colleague who shows up and immediately starts outperforming people who've been there for years. Cosmic Strengths. Clean, modern design that doesn't sacrifice functionality. Performance-focused development that keeps things snappy. Excellent balance between simplicity and features. Innovative workspace management that actually makes sense. Strong integration with Pop OS. Its weaknesses. Still evolving, with some features under construction. Limited customization compared to KDE. 
Smaller community means fewer tutorials and extensions. Cosmic represents a fresh approach that takes the best parts of GNOME's simplicity, but adds back just enough traditional elements to keep it intuitive. It's like GNOME and traditional desktops had a baby, and that baby turned out to be really good at organizing things. With System76's continued backing, Cosmic is only going to get better. Keep your eyes on this one, folks. Our B tier is packed with solid desktop environments that excel in specific areas, but have limitations that keep them from the top spots. Cinnamon, strength. Traditional layout that won't send you searching for a manual. Good balance of features and performance. Highly customizable without needing a computer science degree. Stable and reliable for everyday use. Weaknesses. About as innovative as a brick, but sometimes that's what you want can struggle with effects enabled on older hardware. Development moves at a leisurely pace. Cinnamon is perfect for Linux newcomers or anyone who wants their computer to just feel like a computer, not a science project. It's the desktop equivalent of comfort food. XFCE. Strength. Lighter than a feather on system resources. Rock solid stability that would make concrete jealous. Works on hardware so old, it belongs in a museum. Simple, no-nonsense interface. Weaknesses. Default appearance that screams, I time-traveled from 2005. Fewer modern features out of the box. Development cycle that makes glaciers look speedy, though it has improved. XFCE isn't trying to win beauty contests or innovation awards. It's focused on being the most reliable, efficient desktop possible. And at that, it excels. If you value stability and performance over eye candy, XFCE deserves your attention. Aju. Budgie sits comfortably in the B tier as a desktop that successfully bridges traditional and modern approaches. It's like that person who dresses conservatively, but with just enough modern touches to look current. Strength. Queen. Modern design without going overboard. Raven sidebar that makes quick settings actually quick. Relatively lightweight while looking good. Easy learning curve for beginners. Weaknesses. Limited customization compared to the power user environments. Smaller development team means slower feature additions. Some integration quirks with certain applications. OG is perfect for users who find GNOME too restrictive but don't want to dive into the complexity of KDE. It's a just right option that deserves more attention than it gets. Pantheon. Pantheon rounds out our B tier with perhaps the most visually cohesive experience in Linux. It's the desktop equivalent of an Apple store. Beautiful, carefully designed, but you better play by their rules. Strength. Gorgeous, consistent design that makes other DEs look thrown together. Mac OS inspired, but with its own identity. Focus on simplicity and elegance. Attention to visual details that others overlook. Weaknesses. Customization options that make GNOME look flexible. Strongly tied to elementary OS. Missing some features power users expect. Pantheon is the desktop for people who value beauty and consistency above all else. It works best within its native elementary OS ecosystem, where everything is designed to work together seamlessly. If you're a former Mac user or just appreciate thoughtful design, Pantheon might be your Linux home. LXQt. LXQt is the ultra marathon runner of desktop environments, stripped down to the essentials and focused entirely on performance. It's not trying to win beauty contests. It's trying to run on your toaster. Strength. So lightweight, it practically floats. Modern cute based technology under the hood can revive hardware that other DEs would declare dead on arrival. Simple configuration that gets out of your way. Weaknesses. Features. What features? Appearance that only a minimalist could love. Integration that sometimes feels like separate components rather than a cohesive whole. LXCute knows exactly what it is and who it's for. If you're trying to squeeze life out of ancient hardware or create a kiosk system that uses minimal resources, LXQt is your friend. For everyone else, it's probably too Spartan. Deepin. Deepin is the supermodel of Linux desktops, 
gorgeous to look at, but with some questionable life choices, it's all about that visual wow factor, strength. Beautiful design that could make Apple designers jealous. Unique control center that's actually intuitive. Animations and effects that feel premium. Attention to visual details. Weaknesses. Privacy concerns that would make Edward Snowden nervous. Performance issues on some hardware. Stability that can be as unpredictable as the weather. Deepin is a desktop of contradictions. It's visually stunning, but raises privacy red flags due to its Chinese development and potential telemetry issues. If you value aesthetics above all and aren't handling sensitive data, it might be worth a look. Otherwise, proceed with caution. Mate. Mate is the desktop equivalent of comfort food. It reminds you of simpler times when GNOME 2 ruled the Linux world. It's familiar, reliable, and completely uninterested in modern design trends. Strength. Traditional experience that longtime Linux users love. Stable as a rock. Relatively lightweight. Good customization within its traditional paradigm. Weaknesses. Design that looks increasingly dated. Development focused on maintenance rather than innovation. Less appealing to users without GNOME 2 nostalgia. Nate serves its purpose for those who want the GNOME 2 experience in the modern era. It's like that restaurant that's been serving the exact same menu for 20 years. The regulars love it, but it's not attracting many new customers. Zunity. Unity finds itself in the D tier. Not because it's terrible, but because it's essentially a desktop environment on life support. Once Ubuntu's flagship desktop, Unity now exists primarily as a community project with minimal development. Strength. Unique interface with global menu that maximizes screen space. HUD feature for searching through application menus. Consistent appearance. Weaknesses. Development that makes XFCE look rapid. Limited modern features. Compatibility issues with newer software. Few customization options. Unity had innovative ideas, some of which influenced other environments, but without significant development resources, it has fallen behind modern alternatives. It's primarily of interest to those with specific workflow needs or nostalgia for Ubuntu's earlier days. Now that we've gone through each desktop environment, Let's look at some specific use cases to help you choose. For modern, powerful hardware, KDE Plasma if you value customization and features. GNOME if you prefer a streamlined, touch-friendly experience. Cosmic if you want a balance between the two for older hardware. XFCE for a balance of features and performance. LXQT for extremely limited resources. Mate for a traditional experience that's still relatively light. For beginners, Cinnamon if coming from Windows. Pantheon if coming from Mac OS. Budgie for a simple but modern experience. For touch devices, GNOME offers the best touch experience. KDE Plasma has improved significantly. Most others are still primarily designed for mouse and keyboard. The Linux desktop environment landscape in 2025 offers something for everyone. From the feature-rich customization of KDE Plasma to the ultra-lightweight efficiency of LXQT. What makes Linux special is this very diversity. The freedom to choose the environment that best suits your needs, preferences, and hardware. There's no one-size-fits-all solution. And that's a feature, not a bug. My personal recommendation, if your hardware can handle it, KDE Plasma offers the best overall experience with its balance of features, performance, and customization. But the beauty of Linux is that you don't have to take my word for it. You can try them all and find your perfect match. If I did not discuss a DE, I would just put them in the F tier. What's your favorite desktop environment? Let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like the video if you liked it, and subscribe to the channel for more Linux goodness.